Hi, I'm Paul Curtis. We're here in Grand Rapids at NTAC 2012. And with me today is Tyler Millsap from Da Vinci. And there's a lot of buzz going on around uh, this uh, America at War project. And uh, th tell us about that. You know, what were the basics of the project? How did you come to the idea? And, and how did it roll? Um, America at War is a project that developed over about four years at uh, Da Vinci Charter Academy in Davis, California. And um, it's evolved uh, to include this um, uh, interview uh, with a veteran, which is really the kind of the heart and soul of the project. Um, it's something that has been really engaging to students and, um, and has uh, given, created a really nice um, forum for community connections between students and, and veterans in our local community. And it's a way that we've been able to connect with the Library of Congress. So it, that, that's the way it's evolved and it's been a lot of fun. And so what did the kids actually produce? It's, uh, there's, there's a number of factors that go into this project. It's integrated, it's an integrated um, American Lit U.S. history project. So in the, on the American Lit side, um, it's a, they, we use a novel circle um, approach or lit circle approach and there's five different books covering four different uh, wars. So they look at World War II and read, or, and read Catch-22 or they look at the Korean War and read the Bridges of Tokori or they look at Iraq 2003 and read Generation Kill. Each team has a, a book that they're assigned to. Um, they read that as a team and the product in their English class is, is actually really sweet. It's a, um, they make a movie pilot as if they were going to turn that book into the next great um, war movie. And uh, the, the pilot is, a, is four scenes based upon driving questions that they're exploring um, throughout the novel. So that kind of covers the American lit side. On the U.S. history side, where we create um, the finished product is, is actually a website um, where a lot of different content is captured. Um, the first piece is they do a lot of in-depth historical exploration of the war that they're assigned to. So if they're reading Generation Kill, they would be doing some in-depth historical research on Iraq 2003. They create a multimedia timeline on that website. But the really neat piece um, in the finished product is that finished veteran interview. They do a 30 to 90 minute interview with a veteran from the conflict that they've been studying um, uh, and uh, when that's done they archive it according to Library of Congress standards they post it um, to YouTube and then link it on this website so it's kind of a comprehensive website that shows a lot of different knowledge um, about the book and about the war and so where did the students find these veterans to interview that's been kind of a, a really fun part of the project. Uh, it comes from a lot of different places. Um, as, as the teachers, me and, and two other co-teachers, uh, we, we kind of pounded the pavement and, and went out to contact some local groups to find veterans, but it's also been the students as well. Um, students contacted family members, students reached out to our Davis um, VFW, Veteran of Foreign Wars, mm -hmm. um, to seek interviewees. Uh, we had students go to convalescent homes and nursing homes to find veterans. Um, did a lot, a lot of outreach within our um, our school community, contacting parents, grandparents, um, friends of friends, neighbors. Um, so it kind of went in a lot of different directions to get enough interviewees to participate. I imagine it gets harder to find veterans from World War II now as that generation ages. Yeah, it's it's definitely getting um, harder and harder. In fact, you know, we our, our original list that we got um, of interviewees from the American Red Cross as we started trying to contact them you know there were folks on the list who had actually not been removed because they had passed on that's mm -hmm. really kind of a uh, it's, it's really kind of sad but it's a really nice piece of the project that um, we're getting these stories before those stories are lost and they're being archived and preserved um, for the future so trying to get as, as many as we can within our local region which is that was really kind of the impetus of, of the project it, it came from an idea from our local congressman who himself was a Vietnam veteran and and, um, you know, he's out in D.C. and was aware of that Library of Congress was promoting this program and wanted to bring it back to our community and our region. And, um, and so we partnered with his office and, and they were a lot of help in, in making this work. What an amazing adult connection. That's fantastic. Yeah. So we, what were some of the big student takeaways as a result of this work? Uh, did you see um, a, a change in their attitude towards war? A, a change in their concept about veterans? Uh, just you know, what, what was the student experience like and what transformation did they make? Yeah, boy, there's, it's, it's kind of hard to capture all of those, but um, I can certainly point to a few. You know, we live in a 
uh, my particular com community is, um, you know, f fairly liberal, and the views on war are pretty consistent. It's a pretty anti-war sort of town, and so there's kind of a, uh, a tendency for for students to just adopt that view and have that view without really considering it deeply. And when these students have a one-on-one -on -one experience with somebody who has lived through combat and is living day to day in another country, um, experiencing all this, they're just forced to consider it in a deeper way. So although not all students, you know, flip from being anti-war to pro-military, they certainly understood the sacrifices and the costs and a lot of the reasons why our service members do what they do and really gained a deeper appreciation for it. They came to understand some of the other goals beyond fighting and conquering such as humanitarian efforts um, and that sort of thing. Um, another huge takeaway, I got to sneak this in here at some point, is that um, you know they studied these conflicts in in depth um, and looked a lot at foreign policy, why we do what we do in different countries. And we had our congressman come and participate in a celebratory assembly at the end of this project, and he spoke to the students. And he's a he's a he's a member of Congress who actually participated, who, who actually voted to go to war in Iraq. So we've got a person who has that power and has and has the authority to do that, speaking directly to our students about that decision. And they were able to hear his perspective on it. They were able to ask him questions about why why we do that. Man, that was. That was amazing. Yeah, I can imagine that was very powerful. Um, was there a particular student that you remember who had a, a, an especially great interview or um, something that really, he, he came to class the next day, he or she, and just said, Mr. Musa, look, look what I learned. Yeah, absolutely. Um, there were several, but the one that, that probably sticks out the best to me is there was a, a group of, for whatever reason, it was a team of, of four girls. Um, nice, sweet girls, but not the most outgoing. And they happened to be matched with um, the, a veteran, I'm not recalling his name at the moment, I really wish I was, but um, he had been injured by um, friendly fire during his time in Vietnam and had suffered some really severe injuries to the whole left side of his body. His, his arm was barely functional and his, his leg was very fu barely functional. And um, he had never told his story. He had come back, he had never sat down and, and told um, to what had happened to him. And for some, and he saw our, our article in the paper asking for veterans to participate and um, he, he decided it was time for him to do this. So these four girls went and sat in his home for two afternoons for a total of eight hours and he told his story for the first time. And I mean there was, it was painful, it was personal, there were tears, but it was, it was a very powerful experience for the students, for the veteran. They were able to bring that experience back to the rest of the class and, and it was powerful for them. So those Did kind they of videotape things. it or was it just a... Yeah, they, so the, the archival expectation is that it's, it's videotaped. Um, there's some, a few other, you know, forms, biographical data, release forms, and then a transcript that's done afterwards. So we have all of these videotaped and um, at this point we've, we've done over 50 interviews that have been submitted to the Library of Congress. We've, we've got 50 archived videos. Wow, there. that's really, again, that real world connection is just huge. I yeah. uh, love that. So what about you personally as a result of doing this project over the years? Uh, how has it changed your perspective either with regards to teaching but also with regards to your opinion about war and how has it influenced you as a person? Oh boy. Um, well, with regards to teaching, um, something that I've taken away from this is uh, the, the, the willingness to have faith in how a project can evolve, even though you don't know the way that it's going to evolve. Um, we, we really kind of took a risk. The congressman's office just said, hey, you want to participate in this program? And at first it sounded like more work, like, no, I don't really want an extra thing to do. But that program, the Veterans History Project, ended up being the heart and soul of this whole project and, and driving it along. And so, you know, taking that risk and being willing to do that, see where a project goes, that's a, that's a big takeaway for me. Um, having faith in the students to do a task, like prepare, get themselves prepared for an interview that could be uncomfortable, that could be difficult. Um, you don't know where it's, what this guy is going to say, um, but having faith that they can, they can do that, that's a big takeaway, trusting them to do that. 
I don't know it's changed my views on war necessarily, but just like with the students, you, hearing the personal stories makes you appreciate what these people have done and what they've sacrificed. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, I think that's about all the time we have today, but just again, another great example of teachers taking the initiative to, um, to really let their students loose to learn, and that's what New Tech's all about. So from Grand Rapids, Michigan, here at NTAC 2012, thank you very much. We'll see you soon. I heart DV.